Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this render in Twin Motion with Path Tracer. Remember that all the links for the assets used in the video are in the description. Also, remember to stay tuned for a bonus tip at the end of the video that will save you a lot of time. First of all, this is a model without much architectural sense. It is more than anything to show several different materials and situations in the same scene. With that said, first we are going to prepare the model. The idea is that before taking it to twin motion, we simplify it or directly model it, taking into account how you would actually do it in a physical model. For example, in this case, the model has the minimum necessary detail. If, for example, you have modeled doors with handles or furnished interiors, the best option may be to hide them for this rendering. If your model has a lot of small details and it would be very tedious to modify, you can simply leave it and apply the same material to the entire object. When we render from this distance, it is not so noticeable and is hidden very well, but avoid having, for example, a door of one color with the frame and handle of another in a real model that would not happen. This brings me to the other point, which is to differentiate with materials directly in your 3D modeling software because then replacing them in twin motion is going to be much easier. I usually put a color instead of a texture image since they allow me to differentiate the materials without the model file becoming too heavy in terms of memory and speed. You may also have noticed that the terrain doesn't have a realistic shape and curvature. It looks like it's sliced, just like we would do in a real model. In this case, to do it in SketchUp, we must first have our terrain in a group and draw a larger rectangle. Then we copy it several times depending on the scale in which you want to show it. Once we have enough flat planes that cover the terrain, we select an end of the created rectangles and right click on it, intersect with the model. All right, we can now select the planes and delete them, which should leave us with only the part of the planes that intersect with the terrain. We hide the terrain, we activate the parallel projection mode, and we go to any side view. What I do in this case is group each contour line separately, since when extruding, problems can arise with the orientation of the faces if we do not do so. Once everything is grouped, we extrude all the levels individually, and if we extrude all of them and there are no loose lines left, it should be a solid group. It is important that this is the case because now we can use the solid union tool and voila, the slice terrain is ready. Before exporting to Twin Motion, you can choose whether to place the trees directly in SketchUp or do it later. In this case, I already positioned them because they are very simple and do not slow down the file. In case you want to use trees with more geometry, I recommend placing them in Twin Motion or if you need them to be in an exact location, you can place a low poly tree and then replace them in twin motion with the tree model you want, mainly so that the file remains fluid if we have to make modifications to the project in the future. Now in twin motion we create a new scene, delete everything, and add a starting ground. Then we are going to use a sky dome to illuminate the scene. I tried doing it in several ways, but the one that is most effective for me is this one. In this case I use the one called Studio 24, but obviously you can try which of the wide variety of HDRI that simulates studio lighting suits your model the best. Now with the model imported, we are going to create a scene. And the most essential thing to give it this physical model effect is to configure the camera around 85 millimeters, for which we are going to have to move quite far from the model so that it frames entirely. Once the scene is where we want, we update it so that it saves the position and we activate the path tracer to see how it is looking. With the scene selected, we choose the resolution of the image and go to ambient and rotate the HDRI until we find an interesting lighting position. In this case, I rotated around 180 degrees. Now we can start replacing materials. 
we start with the rough plastic material for the terrain, to which we add a light gray color so that the project stands out from the environment. I also created a new simple scene to make editing the model easier without having to move much in the original scene. Now we are going with the oak veneer material, replacing everything that you could do with wood in a real model, such as the cabin profiles and the rod trees. For trees, use cylindrical UVs, and for the rest, cubic UVs. If necessary, we adjust the scale of the material and luminosity to make it look more like a real model. For the material of the surface where the model rests, I used non-slip flooring too to which I gave a dark gray color with a little grunge and modifying the scale and the normal map. Now for the roof, normally I would use corrugated cardboard. For that we use the gray cardboard material and apply it. Next to the roof, I placed a cube from the primitive section and applied the corrugated metal sheet material to it. Now with the material selected, we are going to copy the normal map and the height map to our gray cardboard material. With these maps, it gives that corrugated look to the cardboard that we are looking for. For the deck, I would use some small pine planks in a model. So here, we use the wood siding material with some variations in scale and color. Always remember to check if the material has a height map in the parallax option within the normal option. This gives it a more realistic effect. However, not all materials come with one. Generally, those that are already in twin motion do not, and those in Quixel Mega Scans do. With almost all the materials ready, except the water which we will apply later, we are going to place the lights. Here I'm using omnidirectional lights to illuminate evenly the whole interior.
activate shadows and play with the position, attenuation, and intensity to achieve an effect that looks well lit. Try to make it look like all the interior is illuminated seamlessly. Now for the water, I wanted to tell you that normally I would use a reflective glass material, but the HDRI reflects and I couldn't find a way to make it not show the reflections of the HDRI in the twin motion parameters. This is why it came to my mind to try a material that looks like translucent acrylic. So for this effect, we are going to use the Cantora pattern glass material with 1% opacity, 50% roughness, 1.20 index of refraction, and 90% of specular. Also the normal parameter, we are going to push it to 100%. And with that, we have replaced all of the materials. For the human scale, I used low poly people. In the description, I will leave the link for you to download them completely for free. I went ahead and saved them in the twin motion user library to place them easily. It is a shame that even though I have saved them all with the same material when I position them, it recognizes them as different and I have to replace them one by one. Luckily there weren't many in this case. Now this is the final result. Be free to experiment with other materials and layout, as well as other style of assets and lighting. I'm probably going to make a future video showing another style of maquette render with a bigger project in an urban area. So stay tuned for that. Before the bonus tip here is another style of trees and how you can simply replace them with any model you want. If you want to use the same ones that I am using in the video, you can download the SketchUp file in the link in the description below completely for free. Finally, the bonus tip I wanted to share is to save the twin motion file without the modeling to have it as a template. So the next time you want to make a maquette render and you will save a lot of time from modifying many parameters. You can also save assets in the user library, such as the low poly people, trees, and even already configured materials. Thanks to this, the next time you want to make a render of this style, you will have everything very accessible and you can make a render like this very quickly. I hope you liked the video. Remember to like and subscribe if you found the video useful and feel free to leave a comment if you have a doubt. Goodbye and see you in the next video.